Hey, welcome back to Adventures in Aviators. Today, we are headed to the Federated States of Micronesia, to the island of Pompeii. So Ponape and the Federated States of Micronesia are far away from pretty much everything. They are in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, thousands of miles from any major landmass. So we lived reasonably nearby in the Marshall Islands on the island of Kwajalein. And one of the main ways to get to Ponape is called the Island Hopper through United Airlines. The Island Hopper starts the day in Honolulu and hops on the island, huh, all the way through to Guam. It ends the day on Guam. The next day it turns around and hops again back to Chuk, Ponape, Kosarai, Kwajalein, Majuro, and then Honolulu and ends the day there. So the lesson here is if you're taking United Airlines, don't miss your flight. There are a couple other airlines that come from the west that you can take to Ponape, but we know much less about those. United is the only American airline that flies into Ponape. So Ponape is not a very big island. In fact, it's 130 square miles. It's about the size of the Virgin Islands or Arches National Park. So it's very small and it's surrounded by mangroves, which means there's not a lot of beaches. And if you want to explore another atoll, there's other types of atolls in the area. In fact, there's two and one of them we'll take you to called Ant Atoll. Ant Atoll is the main place you're going to go for any kind of real beach activities and especially for really good snorkeling as well. Uh, it does require getting a boat to take you over there. It's about a half an hour to an hour uh, journey over to the atoll. Uh, not very far, but it takes some work. It's not something you're going to be able to do on your own. But the snorkeling over there is definitely amazing. Another main attraction of this island is diving. There's a specific area known for manta ray sightings as well, which is really special if you've ever been able to encounter manta ray. But again, these are gonna be add-on additions to your trip that are gonna cost you a pretty penny because things aren't very cheap here. There's not a lot of infrastructure on this island and where there is, you're gonna pay for it. Ponape is not a very big island. So when you arrive via airplane, you're going to deboard from that plane and you're gonna walk into a very small airport. The airport will have a few taxis outside that you can grab, but it's not that organized and you really need to know where you're going. There are not that many hotels and so there's also not that many grocery stores. So come prepared, bring the things that you need and know that there's not gonna be a lot of extras. You're probably not gonna get a SIM card nor is it gonna be worth you getting a SIM card because you really just need to ask the locals where do I go? What do I see? And they will set you up with a driver. They will set you up with everything you need. And that is the best way to get around this island. You need to bring your Western standards down a little bit. You are on a small island in the Pacific Ocean. And you're on island time as well. The odds are when you ask someone about a taxi, they're going to call their favorite uncle and give you a ride. <laughs> Which is great, and it's an awesome cultural experience. But similarly, you just need to relax and enjoy where you are and don't be in a big hurry. Hotels are going to be another thing that might be a bit of a learning curve for you. By Western standards, there's only really one or two hotels that actually are nice and clean and something that we would consider normal in the States. I have visited Ponape two times and I have stayed in the Mangrove Bay and also in Ocean View. Both of these are hotels that are right near each other and they're within walking distance of each other. Both great options. The Mangrove Bay was my favorite. It's a little bit nicer and just a little bit better of um, a view right on the water. But Ocean View is also very nice because it looks up a little higher on the mountain. And so it's a little bit more of an ocean view, higher view of the bay. So both are great. They both have restaurants as part of them or right next door. Great options, our favorite places by far to be on the island. It's where we spent most of our time and had just great experiences. You just need to understand that now that you're in Micronesia, there's gonna be bugs. There's, you're in a dense forest and jungle, so you better get used to those kind of things. You're here for the adventure and not for the amenities. There's a lot of rain in Ponte Bay. In fact, 300 inches annually. 
that's a lot. So be sure to bring your rain gear or bring an umbrella or something to protect you from the weather. If you're planning on hiking, know that you might have to adjust the day that you hike because it could have been rain logged and it's gonna be super muddy. So be prepared for rain, be prepared for the elements. Another aspect of coming prepared means having a fair amount of cash on you. You never know which companies are gonna be able to take credit cards and even if they're gonna be able to take credit cards on that day. Credit card machines go down regularly in this area and cash is always safe to have. US dollar is their main form of currency here, so make sure that is what you have. I can't say exactly what kind of money exchange programs are gonna be if you're showing up with something other than US dollars. There's gonna be a $20 fee for you to actually leave the island, so definitely hold that back in your reserve so that you can leave without any problems. Getting around on the island is a little sketch. Along with taxis, most of the hotels are gonna be able to line you up with transportation for whatever kind of activities you wanna do. One must do activity here is Nan Madal, ancient ruins on the far edge of the island that are made of stone that was brought from the other side of the island. We've been fortunate enough to go to the pyramids and Angkor Wat, and I have to say this is about as impressive as those things. It's really unique and truly amazing. They call it the Venice of the Pacific because of the natural canals that they've built in that the water comes in during high tide that they used to get around on. It's a truly amazing thing and clearly worth at least part of a day as you tour around the island. Not only are there canals, they're still learning about all the structures that are still there. You have to get a huge geographical from an, a plain view to see how many different features there are to this area and how many canals there are. Jason mentioned that it's made of pillars. They're pillars of basalt. Basalt is really, really dense, but it's really hard to transport. So the ability for them to move this from one part of the island to the other is incredible. Very nearby Nan Madal is probably the most popular waterfall of several. I believe there's seven on the island and a lot of people like to prioritize going to see all these waterfalls. We just saw two, but this one is probably the most scenic. It's called Kepirohi Waterfall. And as you can see from our video, it is just truly magnificent. We enjoyed hanging out in the water underneath and had a really good time. The other waterfall that we checked out was Len Pai Pond, and that was a really fun experience, although we had to hike through some dense jungle just to find our way there. We were really glad that we had a guide for this one, not something that you probably want to do on your own. You are really close to the equator here, so it's going to get really hot, and what I remember from this is that I have never been more eager to jump two stories into the water below as I was on this hike because I was so hot. I was ready to get into that water. And as you can see, it's a really fun experience and we had a great time doing this. Please be sure that you know how to swim if you're going to jump off a waterfall. This is one of the many times that we have experienced somebody going into water who actually does not know how to swim. And it turns out that we ended up swimming out to pull her in. So please know how to swim before you jump off a waterfall. That seems obvious, but yeah, definitely don't get in over your head. Be safe. This is not the kind of place that you want to go and visit the emergency room here, okay? So be careful on these islands. Uh, have a good time, but uh, definitely watch what you're doing. During World War II, the Japanese occupied Ponape, and there's still several markers of their time there. You can see big cannons in a variety of places. I know there's a tank uh, that you can pass along the side of the road as well. So keep an eye out for that. There, people can gladly point them out to you as you make your way around the island, but it makes for an interesting piece of their history as well. I would encourage you to have a guide the entire time you're here. This island is very remote. All of the people who live here are, they really value tourism and they want to be able to 
show you where the cool sites are and what to do and it is a part of their income to be able to show you around. Not only that, you are safer because they know where they're going and you don't. So to pay for a guide, to pay for your transportation is the way to go on this island. It is very safe on Ponape. Everyone knows each other. Heck, most of them are related in some way or another. So don't worry about your safety nearly like you would in some other places in the world. Just in, be ready for a unique experience. One that we really enjoyed was through our guide, who we really just found through someone else who had been there before. And we ended up driving in the back of his truck all the way around the island for a couple of days, and he showed us around during our time there. And we had a blast. Super informative, really friendly, and really unique transportation. That probably wasn't the safest, but you know, we were fine, and it was fun, and it was a unique memory to take with us in the end. So you definitely need to come with your attitude in the right place where you know what you're going to have a really unique and fun experience in a part of the world that most people will never see. And it's not going to have all of the amenities, but it can truly just be beautiful and the number of various experiences that you can have out here is well you'll remember forever. So we had a great time on a long weekend here in Ponape, and I definitely recommend this as a place to check out if you want a really unique experience. An awesome place to see history coming from World War II and well before that with Nan Madal. A variety of landscapes from sheer rock faces to uh, flat, low-lying atolls to huge volcano uh, islands that are, you know, which is Ponape proper. And uh, it's really cool as you take the island hopper across the Pacific there from Hawaii, you do get to see the different stages of these Pacific volcanoes. Essentially a atoll is all that's left of the rim of an old volcano as it's sunk back into the ocean. Uh, but Pompeii you can actually see kind of is in between of that where parts of it are sinking down, but then the reef is still outlying well outside of the edge of the island. So it's a really unique way to see kind of the life cycle of these Pacific islands. Some of the friendliest people you'll, you'll ever meet unique experience to say the least, uh, kind of no frills, fun and truly kind of wild adventures that you can have and that you will have memories about forever. If you have been to Ponape and have other recommendations or specific feedback uh, about your trip, please put that in the comments below. This is not a place in the world that many people get to. Uh, we would love to hear what you have to say about it and we will see you next time.